Hello, this is Clownfish Breeding for Dummies. I'm coming at you with a new video today. This video has a very particular purpose. The purpose of this video is to address some of the questions a fellow reefer and clownfish enthusiast had about how to breed clownfishes. Okay, so the inspiration for this video came when um, a fellow YouTuber and reefer clownfish enthusiast posted a comment on my latest video that she wanted to start breeding clownfishes and she wanted a little help um, figuring it out just with the technical parts of it. So I decided to do this video to just go more in depth on less of like my setup and what I'm doing but what you can do in varying degrees of wealth and uh, supplies to create an awesome clownfish breeding setup. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do with your tank, Sophie, is take out all your sand and take out some of the rock. You're not going to need to take out all of it, but definitely take out some. You can leave your nims in there, but I would recommend putting them in a separate sort of compartment than your actual brood stock because many people believe that you actually need anemones in order for clownfish to spawn. That's a myth. You don't. It's actually harmful. They actually spawn more readily with just a tile structure like I've made here. And that's just because I think they don't have the distraction of taking care of the anemone, finding it food, and protecting it from its quote-unquote predators in your tank. So that's my own recommendation. So yeah, take out the sand bed, take out some of the live rock, and make sections using plexiglass cut to size like I have here. And looking back in retrospect, I probably would have changed the way I did these quite a lot. You can see all I really did was cut holes all throughout these plexiglass sheets and while that has worked okay for me it would have been much better for me if I just cut down the top so that the water level of the tank might have actually been slightly lower I mean higher than the top of this letting water flow over the top because the clown is not going to notice that the clown is not going to come up and try to jump over into the next tank over it's just not going to happen so you don't need to worry about that you could even cut slits deeper slits all down here that would work better. Um, but you're definitely also going to want to paint um, your dividers and the sides and back of your tank black. You can use that. You can do that just by using black construction paper or by using something um, like they make rubber composite paints that are really great because you can peel them off later. And that's what I used here. Um, but you can really use anything. Okay, that's the first part of my advice. Okay, so the second part of my advice involves sprucing up the filtration as much as you possibly can with whatever budget you might have. A great way to spruce up your filtration without breaking the bank is by using canister filters. They're pretty cheap. I mean, this one was 70 bucks, insanely easy to set up, and it could even help save your tank in the event of a crash. Say, for the sake of argument, that, say, your auto top, I'm sorry, um, your return pump was disconnected or your overflow stopped working. Your tank is totally stagnant. You got no water flow. You got no filtration. Your tank is in, in, is in dire need. This would, would still be filtering. It would still be circulating the water and drawing water from your tank. It would be filtering it and keeping the oxygen content high in the water, the dissolved oxygen. That is the most important thing to do if your tank was ever to crash. So that is just a great way. It's an FD extra safety mechanism. And I know that any of you are serious in reefing, as all, you have all experienced that time when the power went out or a wire was disconnected when your housekeeper was there and your tank was screwed up for a while after that. So this is just something that's very good to do. Another thing that's very important when breeding clownfish that can go a long way is using a timer on your lights that gives a long time um, of light, a longer time. So I have all my lights on timers, and this light I have on a timer so that there's like 14 hours of daylight, however you want to block that into your day. That's good because it simulates the time of year when clownfish would spawn in the wild. Very important. Another thing you can do is lower the salinity to about 1.023.
that also simulates the springtime when all the monsoons are coming down, flooding um, the rivers that lead to the sea and lowering salinity of the coastal regions. So you can do that. Another thing that would happen around this time of year was that a lot of phytoplankton and zooplankton would flood through the reef and just sort of signaling that it's safe for these clownfish to spawn. They have enough food, they're not in survival mode, so then they're gonna spawn. So you can, if your clownfish aren't spawning, you can flood the tank with baby brine shrimp, rotifers, phytoplankton, whatever you got on hand, just do your best. Um, definitely put in a nightlight. Like this is a really cheap nightlight I got. It makes a difference. They need that sort of definition of day and night to begin spawning. Um, what else, what else, what else? Keep the temperature in the higher range, so about 80 would be good, 82. Depending on what um, you give your temperature at, your eggs will actually develop differently. A lower temperature will cause your clownfish eggs to develop slower, but then to come out as larger, larger, healthier larvae. A higher temperature will cause them to mature quicker in more days, but come out smaller, less developed. It's really just a preference. If you're insanely good at raising fry, then absolutely have your temperature up. Go quickly, get, bang them out. But if you're not so good and you wanna be slow, methodical, and healthy about it, keep your temperature lower. I prefer to temp keep my temperature in the perfect middle, 80 degrees. Lower would be 78, higher would be around um, 82. So that's my second piece of advice. My third piece of advice involves how and where you can put your actual larval rearing setup to make it the most effective and the most practical. Okay, so I use a 10 gallon, um, just a 10 gallon plain tank for my uh, grow, for my larval tank. Black out most of the sides and keep a white bottom so you can see the detritus if it's um, starting to build up. Keep one side blank um, without paint and you can put your temperature and your ammonia gauge on there. You want to keep it at just a reasonable temperature, probably the same as the broodstock tank, so in my case 80 degrees. And this is funny because the person who just asked me to do this video just texted me. <laughs> um, and have, you know, just an air stone heater, it's pretty simple. You want your light to be a good distance away so that the fry can see, but they're not blinded. You'll know if your fry are blinded because they'll go to the bottom of the tank. But that's irrelevant. What I'm really talking about in this video is where and what you should do for your setup. Okay, I got a cheap table right here. It's in my garage because it gets freaking messy when you're raising fry. You got rotifer buckets coming in. You got RG complete spilled all over. You got food over here. You got your testers. You got, it gets crazy, okay? So you're gonna want to have a surface that you can get dirty and you're not gonna freak out and your wife or your husband or your friends or your roommates are not gonna kill you. Um, you're also definitely gonna want a calendar to keep track of when they were laid, when the eggs hatched, when you think they'll go through metamorphosis and stuff like that. So that's the main gist of this video is just, you need to think practically about this. See, I've got like electrical outlets put in helps a ton because I don't want my freaking extension cords disconnecting in the middle of when I'm raising fry. So I, this is just like the beginning of a series where I'm going to explain more of how to actually raise clownfish. I'm going to get some rotifers soon so I can actually raise some for you and take you through the steps. Um, but Sophie, I really want you to tell me if this video is at all helpful to you and we can definitely talk and you can tell me anything uh, more you have questions about, anything else you want to talk about or want me to address in other videos. And this is just, I wanna tell all you guys that any comments you leave on my videos, I will always reply. I want this less to be a channel about entertainment for you guys, more of a community of reefers and clownfish and just all sharing information through my channel. That's what I'm really striving for. So please comment on my videos. Please send me a kick message. My kick is fishy131, that's F-I-S-H-Y-131. Or my email is um, that one as in O-N-E, and then a one as in the, the number Jew at gmail.com. Yeah, I, I was feeling creative that day. So yeah, please shoot me an email. Send me a kick message, any questions, any advice you have for me. I appreciate it so much. And remember, come back to my videos after you've already watched them and commented because I will have 
return your comment and we can actually get a conversation going instead of just sort of bits of information being scattered over a long amount of time that's never connected. Okay, that's all I wanted to say in this video and please like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.